Hey, what's going on YouTube? Adam C here, thanks for watching. So we are at uh, Tom and Debbie's house. They are award-winning breeders, check it out. And uh, we're gonna do a tour of their stuff today, and I think you'll like it better than a lot of the videos that I do because it's not just limited to African cichlids. They've got stuff from uh, a lot of different lakes and a lot of different areas. So let's get into it. So we will start up here and uh, I'll narrate what I can, but Tom and Debbie will handle a lot of it because they've got stuff that I cannot pronounce. But I do know up here are, are these uh, blue torpedoes or yeah. auto fairing silver? Yeah, blue, tor blue torpedoes. This is a 33 long. Yep, There's and then there's also some uh, gobies in there, black cheek gobies, but they... Gobies in here somewhere? Oh well, yeah, they just kind of hop around on the plants. They're in there somewhere. They're in there somewhere. Get a close up of these guys again. So let's move on. We'll go over here to a 125. These look like a Trophius Duboisi, if I'm correct. Yep, yep. mosses. How many do you guys have in here? No Around idea. 30. <laughs> we've tried to count, but they're always so busy that we can't keep track. But Goodness. Two that are. Oh, there we go. Right down at the bottom. Good timing. Oh, I distracted them. I ruined it. And then there's some transcriptus. Pembas. Pembas. Cool. We'll go down one. I do know these fish. These are Aristochromus christii. Looks like a dominant male there. Have these guys started breeding for you yet? or? Not yet, but I think it's... No breeding yet. Now. They just started to color up. and They look like they're, what, about five and a half or six inches or so? Yeah. I think we've got six boys and three girls. Got some kind of big catfish down here, I see. That is Dozer. He's a Trinolotus Blachii. His name is Dozer. How big is he? He's probably about eight inches and pushing at least ten years old. Goodness. He's been shuffled around from tank to tank, poor guy. <laughs> um, they call him the four-line pictus. Four-line pictus. Never heard of it. One more shot of the trophies up here. Are these guys are these guys breeding pretty consistently, or they do? And I should probably strip some of the eggs, but by the time I go to strip them, normally they've already eaten the eggs. So when we we're gonna the plan is to move them into our two hundred and sixty five gallon tank and just have a massive colony. So he can start saving some of the eggs and frying. Very cool. If I ever had Trophius, I think this is the type that I would get. They're really um, pretty low maintenance for Trophius. They're not super aggressive. Um, and, and they're, I think, pretty much extinct in the lake. So hmm. it's an important species to preserve and maintain collection point here. Very cool. All right, moving on. So moving on, we're at a 265, and I can't pronounce any of these fish, so uh, they'll handle that, but I know they're really unique looking, so hopefully I don't scare them. So the, the guys with the upturned mouth are Haplotaxido and Microlepis, and that guy you're looking at now is Anathochromus permaxillaris. Um, we've got some Tanganacotus ursicae goby, Tanganican gobies in there. And the sips are Cyprochromus katumba. Those are the sardine cichlids. These guys look crazy with these huge eyes. Those are a wild caught pair. Well, not a breeding pair, but a wild caught pair. Wild caught pair. And this is the tank that the uh, the trophies are going to be going into, correct? Yes. yes. Hopefully soon. Maybe today. <laughs> Maybe today. I'd imagine it's gonna take a while to catch all these fish out of here with all these rocks, especially if you look One of them's hiding down in there. He'll be easy to catch. <laughs> I guess he'll be easy to catch. Just take the whole thing out Yes, okay, so we've got a couple 40 gallons up here and these are a pair of comb tail garamis that we received from a member of the fish club and then in the bottom somewhere, there should be, I think there's seven or eight Tachia Intermedia, the wood cats. I think I around. see one right in there. 
We've had aches from the tachios and yet to have anything happen with the grummies. Here, I'll throw a little flake in there. The tachios should just come out. We're going to throw some flakes in here and see if we can get those to come out. I, I swear they're, they're, not. In <laughs> they're in here somewhere. All right, that didn't work. I think they're scared of my camera. You can just see the one he's hanging out in there. If they come out, we'll come back. So to the right of this, we have another 40. These look like... Retraculus lepidifers. I'm glad they're pronouncing all these names because I don't know any of them. They look like geophagus, kind of. They do, but they're like gobies, too. They've got the reduced swim bladder like a goby. They're from uh, rapid currents in South America. So, yeah, it's like a goby earth eater. Very cool. And below that, we have a 125 planted. And if you guys remember when I had my clown loaches and I moved them, this is where they went. And they have a lot more fun in here than they did in my tanks. You can see lots of plants to swim in. Uh, snails in there to eat. Looks like also this is a blue panac pleco if I'm not mistaken, but yeah. I could be wrong. So what else do we have in here? We've got uh, green quarries, just Corydorus aeneas, uh, Rosaline shark. Yeah, we've got some Gianacara, AI, uh, rainbow fish. It's kind of a catch-all tank. There's some barbs in there, and there's some other plecos that we never see, and there's a few banjo catfish. Cool. And the woodcats decided to come out up top now. All right, we're moving back up. So here are the woodcats making a mess. And how many are in here, did you say? I think seven or eight. Pretty unique looking. I also call them the Galaxy Cat. The Galaxy Cat. Star, star pattern on oh, the yeah. Lights. And the eggs are basically just a gelatinous ball. We had them lay twice, just no luck raising the fry. I guess the Grammys don't hassle them at all? No, not really. They kind of hang up top and leave the woodcats down below to hide constantly. <laughs> Okay, we'll move over here. And I do know these ones. These are Lichnochromus acuticeps, Malawi gar. Looks like you got a group of five in here. This is a 75. Um, had these guys bred yet for you? They have. Quite a few times. We've raised up fry. They went through a phase when they were just starting to mature where the, one of the males colored up fully and spawned pretty much with every water change. And after maybe four months, they grew past that phase and colored down and now they're kind of going through a second maturity phase. Yeah, they look good. I know a lot of people are looking for this fish. Okay. And below that, we have another 75. And these are Dimidiochromus dimidiatus. And then it looks like you have some sword tails in here as well. And this is a breeding group of Dimidiatus in here? We hope. You hope, yeah. A trio. <laughs> a trio. One male and two females. So. Just one up there. Right there. now we're just trying to make sure that they grow well and are happy and eating well. And we'll, if they decide to breed, that's awesome. But right now, we just got them a few months ago. So we want to make sure they're healthy. And yeah, I'm sure they'll come around and start breeding pretty soon. This is another 75 up top. Um, I know I see Nimbochromus lini, some small guys. And then these are the autopharynx. So these are the silver or blue? I already forgot. These are the silver. These are the silver. They have a lot of blue in them, too. We don't know. I know we got one male. The other one has never got any color. We're hoping it's a female, but still not sure. And then there's some Alanacara Walteri in there as well. It's kind of a grow out tank. And going down below, 
These look like South Americans of some sort. Yeah, so we have um, four heroes laborifer. Those are the true mouth brooding heroes. Most of them are egg layers. They're delayed mouth brooders, so they lay eggs, and then when they start to wriggle, the female will pick them up and carry them in her mouth. And then we also have a Giancara Sturgiosi, Sturg um, and Plecos. Close ups of these guys. Looks like we have a discus pair here. Do you get any any little ones from these guys or? No, we've had eggs several times. Just our water right now we're trying to slowly add RO to this tank. Our pH is so high that the eggs are never hatched, so we're just slowly working with them trying to get where it's mainly RO water and what type of discus the are these a snake skin type or a leopard type or do you happen to know uh, we do not we were given these from another member in the fish club cool. that they bred for him all the time and like I said we've had eggs but no fry yet they look like they're pretty good size for discus almost the size of a small dinner plate and then we've got a bunch of rummy nose tetras in with them Okay. And down here, are these your Copetochromus uh, chrysonitis? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I believe in the tank above with Eleni, I don't know if you saw or not, but there's some eggs in there and that is from these guys. Yeah, and at this, we've been having bad luck with ratios. With these guys, we ended up with six males and one female. Six males and one um, female. We've moved on a few males, but we've actually had some success getting them to spawn, so. Very cool. Here's a rack of 30 breeders. Um, you guys can walk us through what you have here. These are, um, I think, our only Central Americans right now. These are the Rickby's Calalepus, Rio Carolina. They came from Rusty Wessel. Um, pretty uncommon, the Rickby's. Pretty shy, very beautiful when they're colored up. This one hanging out in there. Moving down. Another grow up tank with uh, some Tanganyikans and some Malawi. We've got Niasochromus Bozulu and then Lepidio Lamprolocus Meli Capilla. See if they'll let us get close. We got one more tank down here at the bottom. It's like some catfish of some sort or gobies? Yeah, or? kind of a catch-all and grow out. Uh, we've got pandagaras and then there's some buffalo heads, diatocranus. Cassuarius. And there's some synodotus petrocolis hiding somewhere. Cool. And there's uh, lone daffodil, two daffodils that we were growing out and now they're in here with everybody else. Here we have a couple of 10 gallons, maybe able to see the fish, maybe not. So in this one, what do we have? They're hiding in shells somewhere. Uh, Alto Lamprologus compressiceps, Sumbu Dwarf. Sumbu Dwarf, Alto Lamp, I can't, compressiceps, we'll just say that. But and I've got some babies they, in there too, but if you can't see the adults, you definitely Yeah, they're hiding the in their shells somewhere. And right next to them, we have... Neolamprologus prochylus. Prochylus. Different looking type of fish. Just the two in here, or are there more? There are four. Probably hiding somewhere. Here's a grow out. Here's some auto pharynx black orange dorsal. Oh, you guys used to have a breeding group, correct? But I guess we you did. sold it, or? Well, we just gave it to uh, Mike Drowdy at Imperial Tropicals. Ah. Let him try them out. And then there's a few uh, Copetochromus fry in here. I think there's five of them. Yeah, that's them over there, it looks like. Moving down, got some fish hanging out in here. Yeah, these are another Tanganyikan Tomatochromus patatus. Hanging out in the shells a lot, I assume? Yeah, the yeah. females spawn in the shells, and they spawn a lot. <laughs> we don't collect the eggs anymore. 
and moving down again near the bottom. Here we've got some pelvic acromasilvae. Pelvic acromasilvae. And the small guys are kind of related to convicts. They're Cryptoheroes. Chitulma lensis. Uh, somebody just gave us those at the Ohio Cichlid Association extravaganza to play with. Here's a 180 of Frontosa. Um, how many do you guys have in here? I do believe there's 12. 12 of them. And those are the Kigomas. Kigomas. Frontosa. Yeah, they all have the real nice stripes, none broken or anything, so it's like a nice group. How big is the biggest one, would you say? The biggest one is the mother of all of them, and she's also the Is it this one back here? Yeah. That was one of the So first. she's the mother of all of the Frontosa in here, is that right? Yes. Cool. What is she, about seven or eight inches? Or? Yeah, yeah, that sounds, sounds good. How long has it taken these little guys to get to this size? Um, They're notoriously slow growers, aren't they? They are. So about a year to a year and a half. That's not bad. And these guys are probably five inches or so. I'm trying to not move quickly. This is a 90, and notice the sign, beware of the attack fish. So what do we have in here? We've got uh, some lupi, alto lamp, progus, compressus ups, red fin, and then cyathopharynx, fursifer, uh, collection point, kigoma. Cool. And they all do well together in here? So far so good. Uh, also just kind of a grow out tank form right now as we redo the fish room a little bit they'll be probably going into a 125 or a 180. close up with these guys again these are little ones look like they're just hanging out in the plants they do very cool now we're at a 40 gallon and what do we have in here because i don't recognize them these are all kind of extreme environment cichlids so i've got Alcolapia alcolicus, which are commonly known as soda cichlids. Soda it's cichlids. These guys, they come from Lake Natron in Africa. Uh, temperatures regularly exceed 100 degrees. Holy cow. They're fed by um, soda springs or sulfur springs and pH of 13. It's, it's just super extreme environment. So are these... Are these tank race where they don't have to have that, or do you have to keep this tank at an extreme I, level? They adapt well to lower temperatures, but they like it in the 80s. So I keep this tank at about 83 degrees and add salt with the water changes. Mm. But our, our alkalinity is fine at about 8.3 for them. It's cool. I've never seen or heard of these before, or even the lake itself. When animals die there, they just petrify. They don't decompose because it's so harsh. It's really yeah. phenomenal that anything lives in it. And these then the cool. other guys that we just got, these are Danachilia chicore from Eritrea. And they also come from a really hot, alkaline, salty creek. Um, these were originally brought in from Anton Lambos and then through Oliver Lucanus and then Steve Thornton, we got these. <laughs> the males will get probably about five or six inches, but they get a huge bright yellow nuchal hump when they're spawning. We might have to see these guys again some other time when they get their hump. Yeah. Be cool. Here's some smaller Malawi gar, Lichnochromus acuticeps. These are probably maybe three inches or so there's five of them and I'm taking them home <laughs> I'm so weak it's ridiculous so I came intending to film a video and I end up buying fish what's new moving on here we have a pond on the ground and apparently there actually are fish in here there are there's some rainbow fish in there some um, danios we set up ponds outside in the spring and summer and then we never know what to do with our plants come winter, so we, we decided to get these low ponds and bring them inside and try to overwinter them and hope they don't get too spindly with our poor lights until they can go oh, out they again. look good. So thanks to everyone for watching. Uh, thanks to Tom and Debbie for showing us everything they have today. 
this is a nice change of pace for me because all I can ever show you is African cichlids. So maybe you learn some new stuff because I couldn't pronounce, you know, 99% of these fish in here. I think these are my favorites. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching and see you next time.